live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, live in Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin, and we are coming to you from AWS reInvent 19. I'm with Stu Miniman. This is our second day of two sets of theCUBE coverage, and we're pleased to welcome a couple of guests from Citrix. To my left is Matt Lowell, Managing Director of Global Strategic Alliances, and we have Marisha Smith, Senior Director of Product Management. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's a Thank pleasure you. to be here. So here we are with 65,000 or so of our close friends with AWS. Matt, you have been managing the AWS Citrix relationship, I think you said for about 10 years. Yeah. Give our audience an overview of what Citrix and AWS are doing and the evolution of this partnership. Well, 10 years ago when we started, uh, cloud was brand new, Amazon's reInvent conference hadn't even started yet, and nothing Citrix made worked on Amazon. And now we're pleased to say that everything Citrix makes works on Amazon and we actually have hundreds of customers and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of users using Citrix on AWS every day. And the pace of innovation in that last decade has, has accelerated. We've done more net new product innovation in the last 10 years than in the previous 20 before that. So it's been a, a fast paced environment. Well, and, and a strong and growing partnership. I remember the first year I came uh, to the show was 2013, and I think Citrix had one of the largest booths uh, at the conference there. Uh, you keep adding to that. Marissa, let, let's not bury the lead any further. There's some hard news dropped today. Uh, help, help understand, help us uh, share uh, the, the new news today. Yeah, absolutely. I, the, there are many announcements. It started yesterday, actually, at the keynote with the Outpost um, announcement. Then we have the uh, ADC validation with Outpost, and uh, the only ADC in that in that, in that uh, validation. And then we also had the ingress routing that also was announced yesterday, and our solution integration into that. Both blogs went out yesterday, and then we have a press release this morning that talked about our quick starts uh, with AWS quick starts for Citrix ADC as well as the rest of the instance type that now we support. Okay, so I'd love to dig in a little bit on the outpost if we can. Yes, sure. uh, my background is networking too, so okay. people have been geeking out trying to understand this. You know, some of the key, you know, the secret sauce inside of Outpost is that Nitro chip from Annapurna uh, help really extend what AWS is doing in the public cloud to a customer's data center. Reminds me a little bit of what Networker has been doing for customers' applications uh, for quite a long time. So how do those pieces fit together? So for, for AWS, right, uh, the, the focus is for some of the customers that has more uh, application-centric that is on-prem, that has regulatory compliance requirement, and for those customers that really want to do that hybrid with on-prem and cloud, this is the best approach for them that they can use the on-prem solution with, with Outpost, but put the VPX, the NetScaler ADC VPX on the Outpost and provide that solution for hybrid customers that want to have the enterprise grade solutions on-prem and cloud. So. I, I look at Outpost as more strategic than just a conversation around a new piece of hardware and some new Nitro hypervisors, right? This is Amazon's first move into hybrid cloud which we've been doing since the beginning. And when you look at where Citrix ADC is already deployed, right, it is a leading piece of technology in the corporate data center, in the DMZ, protecting the corporate assets. And so now we have a situation where we've been helping Amazon with hybrid for a long time. Now they're moving their infrastructure onto premise and we're starting to combine our on-premise footprint with their on-premise footprint. And it's really actually an interesting, yeah. interesting time and place to be working, not just with Citrix ADC, which is first, but in the future with things like Citrix SD-WAN, which is the other major piece of our, our networking portfolio. So when the Cube was at Citrix Energy, I think that was back in, I'm going to guess April, in the spring. So many yeah. Cube shows I, I lose track. We, uh, Keith Townsend and I were there for several days, got to talk with a lot of your customers, your leaders, all about how ultimately the workforce five generations in the workforce today, which kind of surprised me, but how everybody is distributed, and that's how people need to work. Similar with how organizations are now hybrid multi-cloud, there's all of these technologies that need to work together yes. in order to enable the worker to deliver what that business needs to drive differentiation. 
Talk to us a little bit about some of the parallels there in terms of what Citrix delivers to the workspace and how what you're doing with Amazon is going to allow businesses, whether it's a retail organization or a bank, to enable ultimately, at the end of the day, those workers to get stuff done wherever they are so they, they can access applications whether they're on-prem or in the cloud. So, so the workspace in, is, conversation's an interesting one and you used a word, hybrid multi-cloud, which you don't, you don't necessarily hear in Amazon circles a lot. They are the largest of the clouds, right? Um, but that said, our job is to deliver every application known to mankind. And that is those that are built on-premise by IT and those that are running as SaaS from any provider. And there are companies that make important applications that also have clouds. Um, we tie all that together, right? So with the Citrix networking and the ability to terminate the, the end user's SSL session, we can see all the traffic, regardless of where it originated. We can tell what that user is doing in real time and we can apply new and innovative solutions like things that Amazon is a leader in around machine learning and artificial intelligence at the user level to say, is what this user is doing today normal for that particular user? Not for some other user, normal for you. And are you behaving unusually? Because if you're behaving unusually, maybe there's something we need to click down in on. So we're looking really, really closely at how the world is evolving, the move towards SaaS is happening, IT is losing control of the application servers, and they're moving out into SaaS land. Many of them are on Amazon, some of them are elsewhere, and all of them have to be governed. And that's where we're really investing heavily in redefining what is Citrix for the future. Yeah, so Matt, it's, it's always interesting. When people look at this space, they're like, oh, cloud is changing everything, and uh, you know, Amazon is taking over the world. So I, I mentioned Citrix had the biggest booth back in 2013. There was a little product called AWS Workspaces that was announced, and oh, yeah. everybody was like, well, it was nice that Citrix had a long relationship with Amazon. <laughs> I guess we won't be seeing them next year. Well, here we are in 2019, yeah. strong right. partnership. Help us understand how that dynamic works out and how you, know, you, you, that, you, you, you work through uh, some of these co-opetition environments. That, that's a fun one. So we run into co-opetition across the board. We have some in the networking arena with core load balancing services that exist in all the cloud platforms. And we have it with a variety of startups in the DAS land. And, and when I look at workspaces, it's a, it's a quality product for a simple user that needs it now and needs a small quantity. You know, some of the larger enterprises are looking at it for simplicity, but when I look at what it's capable of doing and what its total costs are versus what happens when we can deploy the 30-year mature solution from Citrix on Amazon, we still find a large percentage of the customers need what Citrix delivers. And so we have actually probably more Citrix workspace users on Amazon than on any other cloud. It's depending on how you meter it, it's a little hard to say with total accuracy, but it's been supported on Amazon for longer than anywhere else. And, and we know customers appreciate the combination of the two, and we look at what, what AWS is able to provide from a platform perspective with you know, built-in high availability, built-in global reach, built-in global performance. Those things are all valuable to our customers and they deliver a great platform at a reasonable price, so we support that. At the same time, we're moving out of that market. That pixel remote presentation market, it's, well we're not moving out of it, we're moving beyond it, right? It is still a core part of our portfolio. But our investments going forward are in delivering of those applications into the intelligent workspace, regardless of where they originate. And many of those user sessions won't actually be virtualized at all. They'll be controlled, governed, and secured with Citrix Workspace and Citrix Networking Technology, but won't be dependent on things like DAS, which is what you get out of those, those services like AWS Workspaces. Yeah, Marissa, when, when I talk to customers, one of the, the biggest challenges they have is you know, the, the, the changing portfolio of applications that they're dealing with, it, it's getting more complicated. It's you know, gone from monolith to microservices, everything's distributed, you know, it's not just my data center in the public cloud, Edge now becomes a larger piece of the discussion. You know, these are the types of solutions that Citrix has been helping a long time. You know, what is different now about the, the, the application landscape and how Citrix is working with customers than it might have been a few years ago? What's different now is definitely the, the more modernization of the apps, right? The digital transformation, it was talked about in all the different keynotes yesterday and today. And, and as we do that, we need to help our customers adapt with the applications that they do have, whether it's the legacy apps or the, the more uh, adaptable, flexible apps that can go to the cloud with Kubernetes and, and, and that in container environment. But with Citrix solutions, you can actually do that with, with Citrix ADC being in a container environment, so we can provide that east-west traffic with Citrix CPX. 
while we also have the north-south traffic for the le uh, legacy three-tiered uh, web apps that's, that's are always going to be there for m majority of the customers, right? But what makes Citrix unique is that we do have single code base for Citrix ADC that can run in the traditional apps, as well as now the east-west traffic for all more modernized applications, which is critical. And for Citrix overall, it's three pillars, right? One is the end user experience, that's always got to be stellar. And number two is giving the customer choice of which environment they want to work with. And lastly, is providing security. And with the Citrix overall solution, where workspace from an end user perspective and the apps closer to the applications with the Citrix ADC, together provides that end-to-end -end solution for our customers. Marissa, can you give us an example of, you, I'm, I presume as a senior director of product management, you're in the field a lot, you talk with customers. Some of the things that, that AWS showed yesterday on stage, we saw Cerner talking about their healthcare transformation. We saw Goldman Sachs, CEO, go from DJ to talking about how they have completely transformed their consumer finance business. What's an example that, that you think, when you're out in the field, really articulates the value that Citrix delivers, enabling a business to truly transform so that regardless of the application infrastructure, they're able to harness the data, yeah, extract yeah. insights from it, and use it as a business differentiator. Yeah, so for our customers, it's, it really resonates the Cerner one and Goldman Sachs, because uh, they're, you know, they're, we w deal with a lot of our, our customers that way, especially in the healthcare industry, uh, whether they decide to go some of it in the cloud, you still want to, what's important for them is that, um, that, that compliance, that security, that data protection, it still matters, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud environment. And so in that case, this is where our Citrix solution, as they decide to take some workloads on-prem or in the cloud, they can still use the same feature-rich capabilities that Citrix ADC or the workspace have to connect all their, their applications in one place and still get the initiatives that they need for their company to, to uh, get the best ROI, as well as not having to do the day-to-day -day, uh, data center um, uh, changes. Now they can be flexible by putting that in the cloud. So, so if you look at if you look at how customers have been coming across Citrix and which portion of the customer organizations we've historically spoken to, you know, we, 20 years ago we talked to the desktop team and we were a solution about getting client server applications onto desktops, which was a big problem 20 years ago. It's not as much of a problem today. But even as you move to browser-based environments, security and governance are more important than ever, right? With, we, we see it every day. Another company got hacked, another situation happened, there was another consumer privacy breach. You see the rules and regulations coming out in a number of countries about how data has to be protected, and companies become liable if there's problems. So, increasingly, we're seeing companies come to Citrix and saying, we need help with governance, compliance, and security. And increasingly, we're marrying the unique networking capabilities that we have yeah. with the unique workspace or application desktop virtualization capabilities to create new and improved solutions that, that really kind of change the game for how end users get access to applications, remove the need to know passwords, which limits the ability to actually lose them, right? And, and simplify the, the process of making sure your data is where you believe it should be. Yeah, Matt, uh, you know, uh, such a deep partnership. I'm curious, there's so many announcements that Amazon talked about. Is there anything that's either jumped out at you or places beyond? We, we talked about some of the outpost specific things, but you know, I think about machine learning is exciting yes. a lot of people. Yes. Um, people want to be able to plug into these environments either natively or through hybrid environments. You know, where does that play into your discussions with customers? And uh, So, when we look at how Citrix is transforming what we do. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Um, we are a substantial Amazon customer. We are one of their largest. Um, so you can take for granted that we're consuming a lot of their cutting edge capabilities as we build our cutting edge capabilities. There aren't, we're not necessarily directly exposing something like Amazon Machine Learning as a button in our environment. But when you look at what they're doing with end user computing applications, right? They're moving into a world where, you know, they, they mentioned in the keynote yesterday that one of their fastest growing services is Amazon Connect, okay? 
One of our best use cases is for task workers in call centers. You might imagine that there's going to be a future there that we should be looking at. And so I, I do see the things that they're innovating becoming relevant to us in ways that are more than just about the infrastructure as a way to power you know, servers, storage, and networking for Citrix environments, but also becoming content, rich content, both Amazon-owned rich content and their SaaS ecosystem that's built on Amazon. All those startups they talked about this morning, all of them running in our Citrix workspace. It's, uh, it requires us to have the right networking solutions in place, the right uh, identity trust solutions in place, and make it really easy for customers to consume as a service instead of a pile of bits that they get to construct themselves. Well, Matt and Marissa, we thank you for joining us on theCUBE today at reInvent, telling us what's new with Citrix and what's new with this, or I should say, the evolution of the partnership. Thanks for your time. It's thank a pleasure you. to be here, thank, thank you. Thank you. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from AWS reInvent 19. We'll be right back. <laughs>